So I'd like to take a moment and just speak a little bit about Robin Charles. My meditation teacher, Jack Kornfield, who's a pretty famous Buddhist scholar, has said, love can only be found where we are. Love is nearer than near. Well, being a part of the festivities over the last couple of days and watching Rob and Charles interact with your families, it's really evident that love is nearer than near. When we were preparing the ceremony, one of the things that Rob and Charles really wanted to convey was the idea of, the, of their relationship as a journey and what we experience along the way. And I say this because I'm sure that all of you have had your own journeys with Robin Charles over the years that you've known him. And for me personally, what started out as a journey of relationship, as a, me in the teacher role, I'm their yoga teacher, me in their teacher role has actually turned around for me and they have taught me more about relationship than I ever could have imagined. And while I may have taught them handstands and backbends, they have taught me about love. When they met eight years ago, both Rob and Charles agree on the same things that drew them together. No awkwardness. He made me feel immediately comfortable. And of course, he made me laugh. And I suspect that their relationship over the last eight years has taught us all something really special. It's a journey you've all taken us on, Rob and Charles. It's the first thing that we all in this room experience when we get to be with you. It's um, when we're with you individually and when we're with you as a couple. No awkwardness, immediate comfort, and a ton of laughter in your presence. So Rob and Charles started working on the ceremony back in February. And in watching them and being a part of participant in helping them create this, I got a chance to see under the surface of their relationship, sort of under the hood, so to speak, and I noticed some really, really beautiful things. Rob, when you look at Charles, you fully look at him. I've never seen anyone so present to his partner. And it's not just in the way that you look at, Rob, at Charles, it's in the way that you hold him, it's in the way that you walk next to him, it's in the way that you practice with him and laugh together. And it's not just how you look at him, it's how you look at everybody. You also listen in a way that is so complete. It's like you, you create a circle of listening and it, it really feels like the person's being heard. And I watch Charles with you being fully heard. And it's so beautiful. And Charles, <laughs> you look at Rob with so much sweetness and pride. And it's so evident that you see the true beauty in him. Not just on the surface, but what's underneath. You have a way with your words that only looks, only sees the best, only brings out the best. And I noticed it this weekend too when you were with your family and your friends. You see the beauty in everyone and everything. Not a lot of people can do that. And the way that you hold him in that beauty is, is pretty profound. You also notice the little things, and that makes a really big difference. When we were preparing for this special day, Rob and Charles talked about some of the things that they loved about one another. So for Rob, he said that he loved Charles' sense of humor and his ability to be silly, that he was kind and genuine, that he loved that Charles was open to seeing the world. He appreciated his sense of family and his upbringing. And of course, he had great fashion sense. <laughs> For Charles, it was also Rob's sense of humor and his ability to play. He loved that Rob was committed to the things that he believed in, that his extrovert helped Charles' as introvert, and that Rob brought him out of his shell. Charles loved Rob's groundedness and his ability as a great listener, and that he was true to his word. One of the things that Rob has said about Charles that he treasures, that has always stuck with me over the last couple of years, is that he encourages and supports my dreams. And the thing that Charles treasures most about Rob is, Rob makes me a better me. I am better because of him. I can't think of a more lovely, foundational lesson to live by, in life and in relationship. 
And that's why we're all here, to honor the journey you both have taken us on and what we've experienced with you along the way. We're here as a community, as a tribe, so to speak, to stand witness to support your dreams as a couple, to be a touchstone to remind you of who you truly are, and to do our part to make your union a better you. So while I may have started out as your teacher, in the last few years, it's you that's taught me. Taught me how to listen better, what a balanced, loving, respectful relationship looks like. How as a couple you can walk through challenging times and be better because of the journey. About listening well, and about the power of the silliness and the laughter and the fun part as the golden thread that's, warm, that's woven through a relationship. So in yoga, there are these things called the Yoga Sutras. <coughs> I sort of liken it to the golden rule book about how to achieve the state of yoga. Word yoga means union. It's the uniting of two forces that become complete. And one of the primary yoga sutras is very simple. The Sanskrit words are stira sukham asana. The connection to all things should be steady and have joy. In knowing you both, Rob and Charles, I think everyone in this room can say, that you have helped all of us achieve more groundedness, more steadiness, and more joy. So thank you for that. So let's do some notes. You ready? <laughs> A pregnant pause. <laughs> See, the universe brought us some humor. <laughs> So the tradition of wedding vows actually goes back to ancient times, when it was an individual that was committing vows to a community. It wasn't necessarily a one-to-one -one kind of thing. You were committing to your village, and you were stating what it was that you were willing to uphold as a member of that tribe. And the first wedding vows in history are kind of a symbolic representation of that newcomer's commitment to watch over and protect the tribe and in exchange to get their protection as well. The vow is foundational. It's the couple's first and foremost effort to define and declare exactly what they intend to uphold in their relationship and as a partnership. It's kind of a big deal. So in, with, in witnessing Rob and Charles' wedding vows this morning, we all become an extended part of their union and an extended part of their tribe. And like the first wedding vows in history, as the tribe of community of Rob and Charles, witnessing their vows means that we all have a special role to play now. It's not just you stand here and you listen and you're like, later, and let them go on their merry way. We all have a role to play in upholding that, and making that important, and reminding that of them along their, along their journey and through their experiences. Lisa, would you like to go first? Sure. 